doing today please allow me to reintroduce myself my name is brandon brave on towns host of that show called sports plus life that there's sports podcast where we talk about all of the necessary topics in sports and all of the necessary topics in life how the hell is everybody doing <laughs> i hope everybody is doing great having a great day having a blessed monday a little little crisp little crisp little crisp uh kind of a little bit chilly a little bit chilly in the richmond va but um it feels good you know it, it feels good it definitely feels good and um i hope everybody has a wonderful 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 uh blessed week as it is monday april the 24th 2000 of the two three and before we get started into the realm of sports, I got to give my shout outs to everybody, my black and gold fam and my fam in general. And um, the PSA, there are some events that are going on. Y'all know, um, y'all know my brother, my, my brother from another and my uh, uh, sister from another mister, um, uh, <laughs> Rob and Heather. They um, they have a couple of um, events that they're doing because they have um, fresh made uh, food, farm-made food, uh, really good stuff. But they have events coming up this weekend um, on Saturday, April 29th. They will be at Libby Mill Midtown. That is right off of Libby Avenue, right near where I'm at, actually. Uh, right off of um, uh, Staples Mill Road. It is a uh, it is an annual Spring Fling Festival. It is Saturday, April 29th from 12 noon to 5 p.m. And again, that is at Libby Mill Midtown. That is on Saturday. And then the next day on Sunday, there is another festival. So three, uh, 360 Farmers uh, Artisan Market, that's where it's at. That is Sunday, April the 30th, 2000 of the 2-3. Um, looking at the time, I don't... Uh, don't have the time listed on that one, um, but that will be, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. It's from 1 o'clock to 4. Excuse me. Excuse my ignorance. It's from 11 to 4. Excuse me. Yes, this is this is Sunday, April the 30th, and that will be from 11 to 4 at Farmer's Market, 360 Farmer's Market, and there will be vendors, food trucks, silent auctions, fire trucks, and a petting zoo. So come out there, support that HS fam, you know what I'm saying? And, and plus, if it's a beautiful day and it's a, a, a spring festival, you know, get the kids out, have fun, have a good time. I'm definitely going to be at the one on Saturday off of Libby Mill. That's right down the street from me. But anyway, um, shout outs to everybody. And again, I'll say it once again. I hope everybody has a fabulous and blessed week. But are you guys ready to enter the realm of sports? I'm ready. You ready? We ready? They all ready. Let's get to it. The NBA playoffs are in full effect. And um, the best series of the first round matchups has clearly been the Golden State Warriors versus the Sacramento Kings. The Kings took the first two in Sacramento, and Golden State rebounded by winning the next two games on their home floor. So basically, this has been a series of strictly home court advantage. No team has scratched the surface on the road in this series. That is the only series in the first round that that is tied, that is deadlocked. All of the other series, Brooklyn swept, I mean, excuse me, Brooklyn got swept by the Philadelphia 76ers. They have advanced. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks have been without Giannis for the last couple of games because he took a nasty fall in game one. They are trailing. The number one seeded Bucks are trailing the number eight seeded Miami Heat. Two games to one. They're saying Giannis is going to play tonight. I um I still think Milwaukee is going to win that series, but um, it's 
it's gonna obviously it's the the it's gonna take a little longer than expected. So I don't think Miami will win another game, but um, they're definitely giving a good account of themselves. But they're right now trailing. Uh, Miami is leading the Milwaukee Bucks two games to one in that best of seven series. The Boston Celtics are up three games to one on the Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta was able to squeeze out a game three victory, but uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum did they thang, thang, thang yesterday as Jalen Brown took off the mask and he started dropping buckets. And the Celtics are one win away from advancing. And um, if you're the Philadelphia 76ers, you're like, damn, Atlanta, come on, just get at least one more game because Embiid is a little banged up. And um, the more rest he can get, the better. Because you're going to need Joel Embiid to beat the Boston Celtics. And Phil, I think Philly actually has a good shot this year to beat the Boston Celtics. And the 4-5 matchup, the New York Knicks are up three games to one on the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm going to tell you something, man. Madison Square Garden was absolutely bananas over this weekend on Friday's game and yesterday's game. That crowd is like, even though it's a star-studded crowd, I mean, it was cool. It took me back to the days when I was a kid seeing all those old Knicks there, seeing uh, John Starks, Allen Houston, and Latrell Sprewell all at the games. Um, Bernard King, I was like, damn. I mean, the Garden is showing out, and the Knicks showed out. Defensive basketball held Donovan Mitchell yesterday to one of nine in the second half. Donovan Mitchell only had 11 points. New York has been Balling. Um, Jalen Brunson has been balling. They had to bench Julius Randle because he wasn't playing. He wasn't. He was not playing well yesterday. Him leaving and not talking to the media. Eh, don't can't say I agree with that. I mean, as long the team won, so you should be happy about that. It's a team game. It's a, it's a definite team victory. Um, uh, R.J. Barrett. J Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, those guys are hooping. They are balling. So, I mean, I know you, I, I, as a competitor, of course, you want to be out there on the floor contributing. But look, as long as the team got the dub, as long as the team got the job done, the Knicks are one win away from advancing in the playoffs for the first time in a decade. So, you know, it's not about, it's not about yourself, bro. It is about the team. So, the Knicks are up 3-1 in that series. In the Western Conference... I already told you that the Golden State Warriors Sacramento Kings series is crazy. That's tied up at two. Um, Denver lost last night to the Minnesota Timberwolves, um, but they're up three games to one. They'll close out Minnesota uh, in game five. Minnesota is, I, I, I mean, it, it's amazing the level of stupidity that exists on that Minnesota Timberwolves team. I mean, they have a very talented, talented team. I mean, look how many number one overall picks they have on the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, um, Mike Conley back in the day was a top 10 pick. And I'm like, bruh, why do you, like you're up 12 with two minutes to go and you're rushing, you're jacking up threes, not using the clock, not playing smart basketball. This is how they lost last year to the Memphis Grizzlies. Just dumb, dumb, dumb. You niggas are crazy. I'm like, yo, I know they just gave their coach an extension. But I may have to reevaluate that because why do they play so stupid, especially when the game is on the line? Why do you play so damn dumb? I mean, it's only well, that's the only way I can just, that's the only way I can really put it. They won the game in overtime, but the damn game should have never got to overtime. Like I said, their season will be over the next time they go to Denver in game five. Um, the, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, my Lakers, they're up. We're up two games to one after um, we won game three on Saturday. Of course, you know, we won game one. We lost game two, oddly enough, when John Morant wasn't playing. I, I just find it to be so crazy how the Memphis Grizzlies are such a more disciplined team when John Morant is not on the floor, even though I know he's a great player. But Dylan Brooks wants to, he wanted to start talking shit, this, that, and the third. So you're, so you're trying to goat LeBron James, and I don't respect nobody unless they drop 40 on me. Bye, bitch. You know LeBron is too smart to fall for that, but you're going to punch him in the nuts? And I know it wasn't on purpose, but bro, you're going to hit him in the Jimmy region, hit him in the baby maker. He falls on, and, and look, LeBron be a very over dramatic at times. When I saw that, I was like, oh, no, ain't nothing dramatic about that. He, that, as a man, that shit hurts. I mean, that hurts. And he, and he acted like he was surprised about um, getting ejected. 
Now, I don't like the consistency that these referees have shown throughout the playoffs. Like, you're going to suspend Draymond Green for stepping on Sabonis, who started the damn situation. But you're going to suspend him for a game. But you're not going to suspend Joel Embiid, who kicked Nick Claxton in, in, in that area. And you're not going to suspend Dylan Brooks, who straight up jabbed LeBron in the, in, in, in the balls. And again, I know it wasn't on purpose. You were trying to reach for the, you were trying to get a steal and you just missed. But damn, bruh. I mean, and, and, and at least when you speak to the media about it, you know, at least say, oops, my fault, my bad. Apologize for it or something. You're going to sit there and try to play the victim. The media is making me out to be a villain. Shut up. Shut up. Because when you because when you won, when you won game two, you was just talking shit, running your mouth. I, I don't I don't respect. No, da, 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 da. you want to you want to uh, give off this persona of a bad boy image. I don't give a fuck what. It's us against the world. It's a da 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 da. But when you lose, the media is making me out to be a villain. Shut up. Shut up. You lost, bro. And before you got ejected, what were you, 3 of 13? You was playing horrible anyway. The Lakers was whooping that ass. Now, John Morant came back for game three and dropped 45. And I'm like, where did, where did the 45 come from? Because the Lakers were dogging them the entire game. But we're going to win that series. We're going to win that series. I told, I told y'all this last week. I told you this two weeks ago before the playoffs started. I said, if we play the Grizzlies in the first round, we will beat them. And we are going to beat them. So the Lakers are up two games to one. They play tonight. Uh, game four is tonight. And, you know, we got a chance to get a commanding 3-1 lead on. Um, uh, the other L.A. team, the L.A. Clippers, look so promising after game one, but have lost three straight to the Phoenix Suns. And wouldn't you know it, Kawhi Leonard gets hurt. After game two, he has a knee sprain, blah, 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 blah. He misses both games in Los Angeles. The Clippers lose both games. They're on the road to getting eliminated. I feel so bad for Ty Lue because he is not a dependable player. He's just not. And I understand that Kawhi Leonard has been going through things personal in his life. I get it. You know, just I just read yesterday how his sister just uh, received life in prison for murdering an 84-year-old woman in a in a uh, Los Angeles casino in 2019. So, I mean, um, from a personal level, of course, that's your family stuff. That's your sister. I feel bad about that. But when it comes to the, um, you being a dependable player, you're not. You have not been a dependable player since you put on a Los Angeles Clippers uniform. The Clippers, Steve Ballmer would be a damn fool if he re-signs Kawhi Leonard. He would be a damn fool. Fool, I know you got the new stadium opening up in 2024. You cannot depend on Kawhi Leonard. And if you have arthritic knees and they're deteriorating, bro, just retire and go play in the big three. And I'm not being funny because I rock with the big three. You just play once a week, bro. Just go ahead and retire. You the major money, got you a couple of titles, got you a couple of finals MVPs. You are going to the Hall of Fame, but you are going to go down as one of the most non-dependable superstars ever. You don't, there's only, to me, there's only one player in the NBA that is worse than Kawhi Leonard when it comes to depending on him to play basketball, and that's Zion Williamson. That is it, because Kawhi Leonard and Greg Popovich created the load management nonsense that has infected the NBA, which is one reason why I don't look at it the same as I used to when I was growing up. But dude, if your knees is that damn bad, retire. Because you, 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 I mean, because when you're on the court, you're great, but Everybody, a lot of people were saying, "Yo, even without Paul George, the Clippers were playing was playing Phoenix so well." Russell Westbrook has been brilliant. As much flat as Russell Westbrook got when he was wearing a Lakers uniform, he has been phenomenal in a Clippers uniform. And now, no Kawhi Leonard, no Paul George, no shot. I didn't think they were winning this series without Paul George. But then when I saw the way Westbrook was playing and Kawhi was and Kawhi was balling, he was balling. I was like, "Damn." Maybe the Clippers could win this shit without Paul George because Westbrook is playing on another level. But wouldn't you know it, after game two, Kawhi Leonard's hurt, misses game three, misses game four. Phoenix will probably take him out in game five back in Phoenix. And it's a damn shame because Ty Lue is such a great coach. They have such a deep team. I feel bad for Ty Lue. I feel bad for Russell Westbrook. Um, it's, it's, it's just crazy. It's really crazy because um, that was... I thought that, to me, that was the most, um, in the Western Conference, that was the series that I was looking forward to the most was the Clippers and the Suns because of all the factors you had into it. You had um, 
Russell Westbrook playing against Kevin Durant in the playoffs for the first time. And big shout outs to KD for for uh, speaking so glowingly about Russell Westbrook because Westbrook is leaving it all is leaving it out there as he does every game. He got a raw deal in, in terms of the way people uh, were viewing him um, when he was a Laker, and a large part thanks to Skip Bayless. I think the way he covered Russell Westbrook has been was very very unfair. You know. I uh, last season I stopped blaming Russell Westbrook after Christmas because I was like, you, you see the you see the film, this is this is who this guy has been for the first thirteen years of his uh, career. It just wasn't a fit with LeBron and AD. But this shows how brilliant of a coach Ty Lue is. He's made the shit work. He's made the shit. If the, the Clippers are going home, not because of Russell Westbrook. Not because of Russell Westbrook, because you have a, a, a superstar who's not dependable in Kawhi Leonard. Straight up, you have a superstar who you cannot depend on in Kawhi Leonard. You cannot depend on him when you need him the most. It, you just can't. And again, if Ballmer resigns him, he would be a damn fool. I would be looking to trade Kawhi Leonard after this season. I would. I would. I heard a scenario of Kawhi Leonard for Carl Anthony Towns, and I was like, hmm, hmm. I don't know if Kawhi Leonard has a no trade clause, but if, if I could move him, I would move him. Because, you know, for the last four years, you can't depend on him. The Clippers have had a championship roster the last four years, and him and Paul George barely play together. Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard didn't play at all last year. He didn't play at all. You know, and it's like, and he didn't play all, at all last year. Only played about half of this year. And you want, I've said this for the last couple of years on the show when it comes to these NBA players. You want all, you want max money for minimum amount of work. Bruh, no. It would be hard for me to be an owner in the NBA. Because uh, if you, if you, you know, if you came and you played for me and you left it out there. And I, I, I like, if a player with Russell Westbrook's mentality, I would give max dollars to because you know he's not going to cheat you. But a player with Kawhi Leonard and Zion Williamson's mentality? Hell no. Hell no. And Kawhi Leonard is an awesome basketball player. But uh, clearly, his pain tolerance is on doo-doo. Clearly. So the Phoenix Suns are up three games to one in that series. And I've already told you about Golden State and Sacramento a couple of times. That feels like it has seven games written all over it. I actually think that the... Um, Warriors are going to win in six. I don't think Sacramento is going to win another game. We know how terrible Golden State has been on the road, but you just got to get one. And think about it. <clears throat> this would set Golden State up. Again, I've said this before. I have to see a team in the Western Conference put them out for me to believe it. I have not seen it when Steph, Clay, and Draymond are on the floor together. I haven't seen it in almost 10 years. I don't... Sacramento, look... They are a fun team to watch. They remind me of the Warriors when they were younger. Tell you the truth, Darren Fox is that dude. Darren Fox can ball. But um, I just think I'm just I'm rolling with the old dogs on this one. And this would set the Warriors up good because you meet the Lakers in the second round. You know, everybody says how horrible you are on the road. If Golden State and the Lakers play in the second round, Golden State will have home court. So you wouldn't have to win a game on the road. It's in fact, if you're the Warriors, you really, you really just have to win one road game, and then you have home court advantage. Because again, the Lakers are going to beat the Grizzlies. You win one road game, and then you would have home court in the second round against LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the Los Angeles Lakers, which would be another great series. It would be, it would, it would be a great series. So yes, playoff are in full effect, and yes, that. <laughs> Man, I Steph Curry had the Chris Webber moment, calling the timeout when he ain't had no timeouts left. That left the door open. I mean, that was good defense by Draymond. But when Harrison Barnes let that three go, that shit was looking looking on target. <laughs> when he first let it go, I was like, oh, my God. Because if Sacramento would have won either one of these road games in Golden State, I'd be singing a different tune. I'd be like, yeah, they may just eliminate. But now that it's 2-2, two -two, it's now a best two out of three. I'm going to roll with the defending champs on this one. And um, and, and it's, it sucks because this has really, really been a fun series. Um, except for when Sacramento pulled that bullshit and threw E40 out. 
You know, that, that wasn't necessary. And I don't think Draymond Green should have been suspended for what happened with Sabonis. Like, it's like, the officiating in the first two games at, of that series was absolutely horrible. It was horrible. I don't think Sacramento's going to win another game. I, uh, Sacramento is going to be a madhouse the next time that they play in a couple of days. But I think the Warriors, I think that's the one the Warriors are going to steal. I think the Warriors are going to steal game five and handle business in game six and go on and meet the Los Angeles Lakers in the second round of the playoffs. That's my prediction. So the way things are looking right now, um, in the East, again, Milwaukee is losing. They're, they're down two games to one. You know, if they lose tonight, they are in trouble. But I still think the Bucks are going to win that series. I think they're going to go up against the New York Knicks in the second round, which is going to be a very interesting series, especially if Giannis is not 100% because of the way the Knicks play defense. And in the second, and, and of course, the other series in the East is going to be Boston and Philadelphia. It's just a matter of time. When, uh, Boston will close out Atlanta the next time they play in, in, um, in TD Bank. They're going to close out the Hawks. Um, so you're going to have Philly versus Boston and Milwaukee versus New York, I think, in the East. I think. Because, again, Milwaukee got to win tonight. I think they will. I don't think Miami will win another game, but that doesn't mean that – I mean, I could be wrong. And in the Western Conference, you're going to have um, – you're going to have Denver. You're going to have Denver versus Phoenix. Denver's going to close out the Minnesota uh, Timberwolves with their ignorant playing asses. Um, you're going to have Denver versus Phoenix, and then you're going to have, I think, the Warriors and the Lakers. So playoffs are in full effect, full effect. Um, the NFL draft is this week. Um, I'll talk about that in more detail, I guess, if I get on the phone with Sean. The draft is this week, but before then, I, but before I talk about the draft, I'm going to get into the sweet science. Yes, this weekend, huge fight in Vegas between Javante Tank Davis and King Ryan Garcia. I said last week I was picking the upset. I thought I said uh, I was picking the upset that Ryan Garcia was going to win only based on the natural skills that he possessed over Javante Davis. I knew Tank was a bigger puncher. Plus, with that rehydration clause um, for that contract, I didn't know if that was going to affect Ryan Garcia's, uh, if he was going to come into the fight weak or anything like that. My game plan, if I was Ryan Garcia's trainer, would have been simple. You jab and move. You stick and move. I don't care if it makes the fight boring or not. All you want to get is the dub. 30 seconds into that fight, I said, Ryan Garcia has the wrong, he's, 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 has the wrong plan. He has the wrong game plan. He's fighting the wrong fight. He's walking straight up into Javante Davis. You don't chase a puncher. You don't. Yeah, I know Ryan Garcia is a big puncher himself, but his game plan from opening bell was all wrong. In the second round, he got caught with a counter because that's what Tank was waiting for. Tank caught him flush on the jaw with a counter that dropped him in the second round. Um, Ryan Garcia was, uh, you know, from that point on, Ryan Garcia was not he wasn't the same fighter when he got caught with that counter punch but he was still doing the same dumbass game plan he's sitting there trying to chase him trying to chase him um and then in the seventh round got caught with a left hand to the liver I didn't see it at first because it was such a delayed reaction and if you saw the angle the angle um uh, the angle of the live you know when you saw it live the camera angle, you really couldn't see it clear. You saw Garcia kind of stagger a bit. You knew he got hit in the body. You kind of saw Garcia stagger a bit. But then about seven, eight seconds later, he backs up and he takes a knee. I was like, what was that? I said, what the hell just I said, what the hell just happened? And um when I saw him clutching for his, his liver, I said, Oh, he can't breathe. I, but I thought he was gonna get up because he was he just dropped down to one knee. It's not like he got put flat on his back. He dropped to one knee and was looking at the referee while his shit was leaking. But I thought he was going to get up, and he didn't. <laughs> and he didn't. And it was a seventh-round knockout for Javante Tank Davis, who approves his record to 28-0. No. Um, some people are saying that he's the new face of boxing. That's debatable. Um, he's definitely one of the faces of boxing. If he's the face, that's, again, that's debatable. But Ryan Garcia just flat out fought the wrong fight. I mean, you have about four or five inch height advantage over him. You have the reach advantage. You know he's a power puncher. 
So why are you going in? Why are you trying to brawl with a puncher? And again, I understand that Ryan Garcia is a powerful puncher himself. But if anything, the bell should have went off in your head when he countered you in the second round. That was early enough in the fight for you to reassess your game plan and start using your natural advantages to win that fight. It really was not that hard. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't that hard. Like, I'm not, I'm not in the ring. But common sense would say, yo, I'm 5'10", he's 5'5". Five five. I have a 70-inch reach advantage. I have, I have about a 3 or 4-inch reach advantage uh, on him as well. You stick and move. You jab, one, two. Jab, one, two. If he gets close, tap him to the body, tie up. Simple shit. I, I keep saying simple because I think, you know, when you're in a fight, I keep saying but it's like, why Goose and his trainer, you know, wasn't telling him to do that? I don't know. Because I literally said, I said 30 seconds into the fight. I said, he's fighting the wrong fight. In round two, I was sitting there talking to my man, Eddie. I said he because he was Brian Garcia was trying to rough him up a little bit, rough him up. He was having a good round too, but he was again, it's like he was trying to brawl with him. I said, he better be careful. And then literally five seconds later, bap, and he dropped it. I did <laughs> I'm not saying this to make me look smart or anything, but I've been watching boxing for so long. I've been watching boxing since I was five years old. And I study boxing. I can, you know, I, 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 I'm good at this shit. I am good at this shit. You know, a lot of my friends be thinking, I, they be laughing because I be sitting there yelling at the TV like they can hear me. But I be saying, yo, you need to do this. You need to do that. Oh, you dumbass. Like, what are you doing? You know, so, so but yeah, Ryan Garcia, you know, that was nice of Conor, Conor McGregor to come into his locker room after the fight was over and say, you know, don't worry about this. This is the... You're, you're still the future of boxing. That's cool, and he very may, he very well may be the future of boxing. But you have to understand, you have to work a game plan. You, you, you know, you have to understand your natural advantage and who you're dealing with when you're in a fight. Ryan Garcia had got dropped before against Luke Campbell, so it's not like you know it was just his second time being on the canvas. But he's been in a situation where he's had to deal with um, adversity in the ring. And he responded well when he fought Luke Campbell. But when he got dropped in the second round against Tank Davis, bro, clearly you, you're trying to pressure a puncher when you should just be boxing. You should be boxing and the flush shots will come later on in the fight. Garcia got in a couple of good licks, he did. But his game plan, his fight was all off. So I don't know what's gonna be next for either fighter. Um, you know, Garcia is gonna go up to 140. Uh, I don't know if Tank is going to go up to 140. I'm interested in the fight in a, about three weeks between Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko. I would like to see um, Tank Davis actually fight the winner of that fight. I've been wanting to see Tank versus Devin Haney for at least about four years. And I know both fighters are young, but that's what boxing needs. Boxing needs these fights between these young undefeated stars you know, to get back boxing back into the forefront. But the best fight, like, like we've, again, we've been waiting for four years for Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, and they're doing the same shit that, the, that will happen with Mayweather and Pacquiao. You have drugged this out far, far too long. That's the fight people have been wanting to see since 2019. And once again, boxing is wetting the bed or not making that fight happen. Really, people have been wanting to see that fight since 2017. And boxing is wetting the bed by not having those two in the ring. I don't give a damn about who promotes who, whose network, who's with what network, I don't care. If you're a champion, if you're, I mean, Terrence Crawford to me is pound for pound the best fight in the world. If you're a champion, you need to fight another champion. These are two top three pound for pound fighters in the world. And they need, I, I'm, I'm tired of all of the shit talk and everything else. You need to get in the ring and fight. You know, you need to do what Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis did. Two undefeated fighters in their prime, getting in the ring and seeing who the better fucking man is. Um, Haney and Lomachenko. Lomachenko's a little older now. Haney's a young thoroughbred, you know. Um, but that's a fight that needs to happen. 
that's definitely a fight that needs to happen, and that's going to happen on May 20th. I'm excited about that. I would like to see, I would like to see the winner of that fight fight Tank Davis. I do, I do. But um, Ryan Garcia, bro, yeah, you definitely have to go back to the drawing board because you did not do, you, you didn't fight smart. I'm just being honest. You didn't fight smart. Canelo fights in about a week uh, against uh, this guy named John Ryder. I don't care. You know, it's you know, under super uh, super middleweight undisputed championship. I don't care because to me, Canelo doesn't necessarily fight. Sometimes doesn't necessarily fight everybody. I want to see Canelo fight David Benavidez or one of the Charlo brothers. That's who I want to see. I don't even know who the fuck John Ryder is. That's who I want to see Canelo fight. Fight Benavidez. Fight one of the Charlo brothers. You waited until uh, Gennady Golovkin was punched out to fight him for a third time because honestly, in my opinion, you lost both the first two fights. You lost them both. Um, yes, you fought uh, um, um, Kovalev. You fought Daniel Jacobs. You did. Yes, you absolutely you did. You fought Caleb Plant. You did. Now, let's see you fight Benavidez. Let's see you fight Jamie Munguia. Let's see you fight one of the Charlo brothers. Let's see it. But um, I do love talking about the sweet science. But um, great job for Tank Davis. And again, Ryan Garcia, bro, you got to go back to the drawing board, homie. Because, yes, you did not fight smart at all, sir. And as promised, it's podcast day. You know what it is. Brother Sean Cudden David. What up, though? Greg Logan. What's popping? Bring it with that action. Was popping as I needed to uh, put the phone on speaker. All right, but we good. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I'm getting shot at on the other side of the beach. He on the beach. He on the beach. He on the beach. Get him! Let's get him! Get him! I'm gonna shoot you on the beach. I'm sorry. You know me. I'm out here killing stuff. Now, before we get into the NFL draft, because I know Sean, that's what you are definitely into. Um, you already know it. I already know it. Um, did you see Dylan Brooks jab LeBron below the belt? <laughs> Uh, come on now. I've seen, uh, seen that little weasel. <laughs> but what got me is that after he got ejected, he's going to say to the media, you know, the media is making me out to be this villain. The fans are making me out to be this villain. Bro, when you won the game, when y'all won game two, you was the one talking all the shit. He was the one talking all the shit about, I don't respect nobody unless they drop 40. And the Lakers came out and bust their ass in the first quarter. Dylan Brooks played horrible, and then he nut punches LeBron James. Now I don't think it was on purpose. Um, yeah, it didn't look too malicious when he did the thing. It just looked like he just wanted to look, tap it a little bit, let LeBron know he was there on, on a swing on it. Yeah, I don't think it was on purpose, but still, like, like you see what happened with uh, um, Draymond Green when he stepped on old boy, uh, who deserved mm-hmm. it. And then you saw when Joel Embiid kicked Claxton in the near the balls. Who should he should have got ejected? So if you Dylan Brooks, you just literally everybody saw you just hit LeBron James in the nuts. Not on purpose, but still, LeBron folded up like any nigga would who gets hit in the balls. Flush. But but you that's a person right now. But you're gonna sit here and try to make yourself look like a victim, Bruh, When it was the total opposite when they won, when they won game two. It was nothing but shit talking and shit talking and shit talking and shit talking. So I'm like, bruh, cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Yeah, that's serious, like. You know, what, I, I was listening to him talk. All I could hear was sad violin music in the background. Like, hey, shut up. Yeah, a little whining like a little baby. Yeah. Like, come on, Yeah, now. I mean, you do you do the dirt, man. You get it. You're talking about everybody trying to make you be out the villain. Nah, bruh, you make yourself be a, to be the villain. When you do dumb shit and you open your mouth, you want to put on this per- persona of you want to be the bad boy. Oh, we the Grizzlies. We want all of that smoke. Blah blah blah. You already got Papa Doc on your team, aka Ja Morant. Um, but then when you lose, when you get your ass handed to you, cause they got their ass handed to them, then you want to say, well, y'all making me out to be a villain, nigga. You. They are embracing that role. Come on now, don't wanna act, don't act like you wanna be the bad boys pistons, then when you lose, act like a little biatch. Don't do that. Like a like a little biatch. Don't do that. 
Straight hope. Like a straight hope. Yeah, but um, as far as the playoffs goes, um, Golden State and Sacramento, that is the best series thus far. I mean, those two teams are balling. It's a shame that somebody is going to have to um, lose that series. They coming to get me. We can play more in the set. But um, that series has been great outside of Sacramento kicking E-40 out of the game. Racism, classes, and atrocious. That's all I got to say about that. What'd you say, bro? Racism, classes, and atrocious. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah, know, man. E40. That's fucking. You don't think E40 out of nothing. You don't throw E40 out of nothing. You let him sit there with his made up vocabulary and you let him enjoy his shit. <laughs> yeah, talk, talk to me, Weevilization. Let that nigga be. Tell me where you go. Yeah. They told him when to go too. <laughs> but still, like I said, like like I said last week to y'all, they wouldn't have done that to Hammer. But um, oh, before we start talking about the draft, David, I don't know if you watch Snowfall, but me and Sean were talking about this on Thursday and Friday. If you are a Snowfall fan, like we are. Damn, Franklin. <laughs> yeah, man. Damn, Franklin. <laughs> and it's my man. The I'm caught up to the newest episode. Well, bro, that was the last episode. Uh, the last one? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was the last one that hit. Damn, Franklin went out looking like Tyrone Biggums. Franklin got hooked on his own shit, huh? No, but he didn't say he was hooked on. He turned into an alcoholic. But the nigga look like a, but the nigga look, nigga look bad, bro. He look bad, man. That's you, why the nigga didn't drink. He never drank. No, he, well, he started, you started seeing him drink, like, pretty much the whole last episode, this nigga was drinking. The whole last episode. But this nigga had dirty teeth, holy pants, dirty wife beater. One of his, his left eye was red like he had just got punched in the eye. Word. He looked like he stank. I mean, mm. bro looked I bad. I didn't know he was over here. Bro looked bad. Bro, and that's and that's what me and Sean was saying, bro. A real hustler would not go out like that. Yeah, no. A real hustler would uh would uh would have took everybody out. A real hustler would have went up in that jail, took his mama out for that. I'm coming for you, mama. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. She, it, it was just him being greedy, bro. He, he, he. He was being greedy as a bitch. You were right. He should have took that offer that that dude made to buy his share of that downtown property and got his family and got up out of that joint. But yep. oh, bro, he want to be greedy. Yep. He wanted to be greedy. Was, yeah. And Shorty dipped on him as soon as he put his hand on her on her throat. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forget that shit was gonna happen anyway, goddamn way. She took that eight hundred thousand and dipped, left. He got to be downstairs. He got to be downstairs on the downstairs body in the, the bathroom. The part that actually made me laugh is when he went to visit his mama in prison. After that, I was like, "Mama, I need you to sign the house over to me." Look, you ain't never getting out of here. So I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> I was like, "Yo." That is fucked up. <laughs> he, picking him, he picking him up now. He did. He said, you mama, you ain't never getting out of here, so I, I need some money. <laughs> <laughs> he he said, mama, I need my house. Mama. <laughs> he said, you ain't never mama, getting out of here. Sell a house to me, mama. <laughs> sell it to me. <laughs> he probably gave him a stank I was like, nah, bruh, I can't do it. And then he gonna cuss her out. I was like, Teddy should have blew your fucking head off. You ended my life. Like, what? Then he tried to strong arm Lee. Damn. Le- 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 Leon Leon had them soldiers. Had to be everybody. He tried to strong arm Leon. Leon had them soldiers. And, oh, that, that was just. You're not doing that with Leon. Leon don't play no game. Man, look, Leon was like, look, I can't do it. Leon said he had about three million left. He wanted the whole shit. He didn't even asked for a million. He wanted the whole three million. He wanted the whole three. So I'm supposed to give all my money to you because you fucking up? What? Mm. Right. So I'm supposed to give you all my money just because you fucking up. Right. 
And um, yeah, that's a, yeah. I'm not. Leon won't about to give up his stash. He done earned that money. Hell yeah. It's like frankly earned his money, and he ain't had that much. And you coming to take my last? No, bro. I'm sorry. I already gave you 500k, my guy. Exactly. Exactly. I done gave you 500 thousand. Now you want three million on top of that? Well, mm-hmm. like you tripping. And when the bit and when when the yeah, business he, down by the, he got he got to be down there. And when the business picks up, I'll buy you off a double trip, nigga. I ain't trying to hear all that shit. <laughs> Like, like, you ain't got my money now. <laughs> like, you got no money to go with now. Like, fuck you, Nick. Yeah, that, that whole last yeah, episode was yeah. very underwhelming. It was pretty much Franklin unraveling. You know, I would have liked to see seen somebody get Louie ass because she deserved it, too. Um, oh, yeah, Louie. Louie hiding on the right. farm with old people. You got to give her that. Say what? She lost Louie need all that. You got to give her that. She lost what? Everything Louis lost, it was her own fucking fault. It was Jerome gone. So they and that's, let her take another L. And that was her, the, the reason why Jerome gone is because of her. Fair enough. Hey, go to the best dude that. I had alive, bro. You killed like the whole server, bro. You killed the whole, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy! I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, my head dropping bodies on this car. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Jesus, yeah, but they, Franklin they ass shouldn't have, uh, they should have took that money and just went home, bro. They took his family with his girl, left, left Leon alone. Leon was doing his thing. Yep. He should have just took whatever, sold all of his stakes and took whatever he had and dipped. Because he already messed up by Trump, but by thinking that Teddy was his friend by just taking the money and telling him that he was leaving. It, he should have already had that money gone if he yep. decided he was leaving. Yep. Did that shit and then say, yeah, I'm out of here. He should have at least had, what was we what, talking about, Sean? He should have at least, he should have at least had about $20 million at minimum in a duffel bag. In some well, duffel bags. You don't put all your money in one spot when you do that type of no, shit. No, you don't. But you should, he should have he should have had cash on deck when he decided that he was going to leave. Did. So whatever money, so even if Teddy did clear out your bank account, you still got some cash on deck where you'll be good, where you'll be good. Oh, that's cool. Where you don't have to change up your lifestyle, but but he he did not handle his shit well. Not at all. Not at all. And, and, and the end result is he looked like Tyrone Biggums. Tyrone Biggums. That's some crack, nigga. <laughs> Give me some crack, nigga. Peanut butter and crack sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's that 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 was terrible. How he went out, bro. He went out even lower than when he gave it. He in, really in did, show, bro. He went out like the customers that he was selling to. Yep. 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 I guess that's the, I guess that's the full circle when you do dirt like that. Like I guess you can't really expect you. I mean, because you're the main character, you feel some kind of way for him, but you can't expect him to ride off in the sunset after all the shit that he did. Though I'd rather see him get his head blown off, go out in a blaze of glory, than go out like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, that, but that's but that's even that's even worse though because you living with what you put out there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And they and they even took his fucking crib at the very end. Took his fucking yeah. crib. Took his mama everything house. from him. He had that. He just walked off in the sunset like the junkie he is okay, <laughs> that he was selling to. So that that was even worse. Yeah, that's crazy. That was crazy. The the crazy the craziest junkie moment throughout the whole uh, run of Snowfall to me was when Wanda was strung out. And her, oh, yeah. and her fucking tooth came out of her mouth. And she asked what? the nigga that they want to buy a tooth. Yeah. Exactly. I was like, what? Her tooth came out of her mouth. She was like, hey, yo, you want to buy this tooth? What? And that's, the really, and that's full circle, though, because he made, he made her like that and talking bad about her. And she ended up. And she ended up getting her shit together. Then she said, fuck what? this. I'm going back to Ghana. And Lee ain't even stopping. He's like, oh, yeah, he, he goes he some knew money. He couldn't go nowhere, but if he kept her here, she won't go. She was gonna struggle. She won't gonna make it. Yeah, she was probably gonna relapse. Looking. Yeah, so he he knew what them mean, but she was like, "Ain't you gonna ask me to stay?" He said, "Nope." Nine. Nope. Nine here. Oh, yeah. And he eventually, and he ended up going. Yeah, he, got, I mean, they, he ended up going back. You know, they they didn't break up or no nothing like that, which was good. I mean, Lee. Yeah. I mean, Lee took his three million and did some good shit with it. Yeah, because you put back into the community with yeah. this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And taking care of the shelter and stuff like that. Like, yep. Franklin ain't do nothing. Like, all his money that he was doing was just straight for him. He didn't really help 
out anybody that he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like Frank, Frank mobsters, mobsters help out the community, at least still the people that's around them take care of your community. You know what I mean? That's how they will protect you. You know what I mean? Yeah, he didn't. He didn't do. He didn't do his Bumpy Johnson duty. He not at all. Uh, he didn't do his Bumpy at all. He didn't do his Bumpy Johnson duty. No, you know he was out living in the penthouse, and everybody else was still in the hood. That's why niggas yeah. still. That's why niggas fuck with Leon so hard. They knew Leon had money, but he didn't leave. Franklin yeah, left. Leon took care of everybody. Yeah, let, no, yeah. No. Franklin left everybody. <laughs> yeah. He moved to that deluxe apartment in the sky and said, "Fuck all you niggas." But then wanted to say, hey, man, if it won't for me, y'all, that might be true. Yeah, that, that may be true, but what does that mean? But you fucked your shit up. Yeah, I ain't gonna let you fuck Where's my shit up. Okay. No, nah, but again, like I said, a real hustler would not, a true hustler would not have gone out like that. No fucking way. Not really. No. A, a true, I like that. A true hustler like would not have gone out like yeah. that. Nigga, a true hustler would have had a corner store or something that belonged to him. Not like, not like that. You know, he should he should have reopened up Jam and Jerome's or something. Something. Yeah. Something. It's Louis Paul. Louis just wanted to get back. Yeah, Louis wanted to be the fucking Kingpin, boss bitch. And, mm-hmm. and she found out where that got her. They got her. Right here for me. It's two of them. Two of them in the middle of the street. Three of them in the middle of the street. Gotta leave. But anyway, okay, so now we've uh, we've had our snowfall rant. Sean the draft is Thursday. Hey, 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 I can't wait. Um, Sean, you will be more excited about the draft than either me or David. Um, I watch probably. I literally paid. Last year when we did the podcast while the draft was going on is the most I ever paid attention to the draft for a whole round. Absolutely. I, I, I pay attention to really the first 10 picks, and then I'm like, I catch the rest on my cell phone. I just, I just get the messages of who got drafted where because um, I don't pay attention to yeah. the mock drafts because most of the mock drafts be wrong. Um, pretty much everybody is saying that Bryce Young is going to go to the Carolina Panthers. Um, once, right, a, yeah, cool. once again, people are trying to find a way to outthink themselves by thinking that C.J. Stroud is now somehow a dummy because he didn't score good on some kind of test. Um, my thing is, what does the tape show you? What does the tape show you? You want to draft Bryce Young as number one? Cool, fine. I, I, I don't. I wouldn't blame Carolina Panthers for doing it. I mean, he's not going to start off the bat because that's why they signed Andy Dalton. He may come in there midseason, okay. but but. If you the Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud is out there, if you D'Amico Ryans, I know you're a defensive coach, but my man, draft C.J. Stroud. That's all I'm going to say. Draft C.J. Stroud. Because Davis Mills then had two years now to, to see if he, uh, now granted, Davis Mills has had two different head coaches. But um, if I'm the Texans, I'm drafting C.J. Stroud. I'm not drafting that 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 uh, that, that linebacker. Um no, they need a quarterback in Houston. But my thing is, too, like, I almost feel like you got to build your team first and then get your quarterback. Well, when you get a rookie quarterback, I mean, you have the rookie deal, so you can still you can still build your team up. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I don't know. I feel like most of the teams that do it, if you get a team, build them, and then put, get your final quarterback. So who would you take if you were the Texans? If I was a Texas? Yeah, they got the number two pick. Would you take C.J. Stroud or would you go for the, um, I forget the defensive dude name, but. Nah, I'm lying. I would go get a quarterback, for real. I mean, <laughs> actually, you need you need a damn quarterback. You ain't had a quarterback in I don't know how long. Since bro. Deshaun Watson. Oh. Since the habitual dick shower himself. Go do it. Oh, I need that. I never forget when David called that nigga a habitual dick shower. <laughs> Who uh, so Deshaun Watson? Yeah. Man, bro, if that nigga even thought about going to some massage therapist or going to Instagram to get a massage therapist, bro, he would be cut immediately. <laughs> if you ain't learned your lesson after that, then you have a problem. You really do have a problem. <laughs> All these other niggas running ahead with money. Oh shit, Future does it on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, this shit don't change. This is a good making more money, and there's more ways to be responsible. That's all. You ain't never lied about that. All right, yeah, my bad. I had a lot going on around here. Everybody. Oh, you all right? Yeah, no, 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 no. But I'm off the game. 
My family is leaving going to Walmart, so now uh, let's talk the shit. <laughs> no problemo, bro. Um, um, I'm also hearing things about this quarterback, Will Levis, but to me, that Will Levis, the dude from Will Kentucky. Levis. He ain't even gonna go to first round one. Bro, that that dude, he's like he he remind me of Johnny Bravo. Yeah, yeah, he ain't, he ain't doing nothing, bro. He's more worried about how big his arms are. Take that chance on Anthony Richardson. I, you would be stupid not to to take the chance. If I was the Seahawks, I would draft him with Gino and give somebody the opportunity to build up behind him because Anthony ain't really ready. I'm tired of these motherfuckers drafting these quarterbacks at round one and making them start because that's why all of them play him out. They change the expectations of these quarterbacks to make them throw him in the fire and say, hey, he's either going to make it or not. At least get these dudes a year, bro. I would draft me a quarterback, and I know that you got to win right now, but I'm like, look, give me a chance to develop him before he breaks getting thrown into the fire. You know what I'm saying? I know. I, I agree with you 100%, but the reason why these teams now try to throw all of these quarterbacks into the fire immediately is because of Peyton Manning, because of Russell Wilson, because of the year RG3. And them I, 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 know, I know that, but try telling that to the executives who think that they are. Because you see the success that um, what you call it from San Francisco had, the Mr. Irrelevant. You know, you saw what RG3 and what Andrew Luck did and Russell Wilson did their rookie season. And people think that, but, but, on, but, but if you look at it from the side that we're talking about, people tend to forget. Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre for three years. Yeah, for three years. And he was ready. Three years, right? He was I'm ready. Man, these quarterbacks crazy. And I hope, and I hope, and, and, and I hope, I hope that if Jordan Love comes out and doesn't have a great season, I hope Green Bay remembers that Aaron Rodgers' first year as a full-time starter, he went 6-10. and 10. He went 6-10 and 10. his first year in 2008 as a full-time starter. They were 6-10. and 10. The next year, he took them to the playoffs, and then the year after that, they won the Super Bowl. But Green Bay should know that better than anybody. I mean, so I don't disagree. He changed the expectations of shit so much. Yeah. So that I don't, you don't even know what, how much time they're going to get him. And then the, then the media nowadays is even worse. Putting this, making, talking all this stuff, and people talking about you. It's so it's so hard to even try to even focus on it. I mean, if you go do that, you gotta focus. I mean, if you in that if you in that kind of environment, you got to understand that it comes with the job anyway. So you gotta be mentally tough anyway. And it just depends on if half of them are mentally tough for real, for real, because you're gonna get talked about day in and day out by well, fans, by media, by er- everything. We've seen well, swings and misses by teams trying to do exactly that look at the new york jets you know you 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 talked yourself you you made yourself believe that zach wilson was somehow better than justin fields oops that's wild if you the san francisco 49ers you made yourself believe it's not work say what like but like do the eyes not work that's what i'm saying what do you what does the tape show you yeah like i don't even look at the tape they got access to all kinds of tape and you gonna tell me that you think that zach wilson would fit your team better than justin fields like that or like the 49ers you made yourself yeah. believe that trey lance was better than justin yeah. fields really yeah i'll even go back further the chicago bears you made yourself believe that mitchell trubisky was better than deshaun watson and patrick mahomes how? Really? <laughs> how? I would. I, I mean, I'm but, still wondering I mean, how that motherfucker got a job. To, to, one, to be fair, too, a lot of these people look like it in college and get to the pros and ain't it. Bro, what the hell did Mitchell Trubisky do in college that, that I made don't know. it? I, exactly. Look, like I said, I don't got access to the film, but I probably can look at the guy. I can look at the highlights on YouTube and tell you that Deshaun Watson would be better than Deshaun All you needed yeah. to know is that Deshaun Watson <laughs> had just won the national championship. He had just oh, no, won the no, national no, no, championship. No, 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 no. So they took a, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you took a motherfucker, a quarterback who just took their team to the national championship. But besides that, you took a motherfucker from North Carolina. From North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They didn't even you make deserve, a bowl. <laughs> but you know what it be, though, bro. You know what it be, though, bro. Nobody wants that. And I'm, I'm, I hate to put it this way, but it got to be that. Like, nobody wants that black face as their, their franchise face of their quarterback, bro. Uh, 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 their, uh, their franchise, bro. Well, um, Carolina seems to not have a problem with it because they ain't have a problem drafting Cam Newton. They're not going to have a problem drafting Bryce Young. The Bears are just yeah. stupid. They were stupid. Yeah. The GM who made that decision, I would fire him, rehire him, just to fire him again. 
Yeah. Because wait a minute, a you passed up on. He go to unemployment and fire his ass again. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fire you... him in there and then goddamn fire him too. I mean, Deshaun Watson literally the last two seasons had been in the national championship game. That's stupid. That's stupid. And Why you would you do that? Mitchell like, Trubisky. Yeah, you the champion, took your team there, but I'm gonna go get this motherfucker from North Carolina. We ain't did. And shit. think about it, Clemson <laughs> is in the ACC, so you saw Deshaun Watson smoke this nigga a couple of times. But you're going to draft him a couple of, you're going to draft him ahead. And like I said, Patrick Mahomes was in the same draft class too. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's why I You know, the Cardinals made themselves believe that Josh Rosen was better than Lamar Jackson. Okay. <laughs> Man, right. that about to be the dumbest shit ever, bro. Okay. I ain't seen them. They're like, I don't know. Josh Rosen over Lamar Jackson. Just Josh have... Rosen ain't even in fucking league. I don't know, man. I'm just different, bro. I just like, I'm, I, I guess they don't like winning. They just like to pick players and just act stupid. And maybe they friends with their mom and them or some shit. I like, don't know. You know. I don't know. But this is I'm why a... I don't pay attention to the mock drafts because At all. most of them be wrong. And again, like I said, everybody's now trying to, uh, CJ Stroud's stock is apparently slipping because he didn't pass, he didn't score well on this test. But what does the motherfucking tape show you? Tape say, what yeah. Is the Tape show and they always beat them motherfuckers. Oh, nope. He did. But but the other thing, they don't say all that shit, but then to turn around and get somebody who was absolutely trash that just graded good on the fucking workout. Yeah, like Will Levis. Uh, like yeah, Will like, Levis. Well, you trash in real life, but because you did good in shorts, now all of a sudden you're rising <laughs> and drop the goddamn side. Like, come on, bro. That's the stupidest shit ever, bro. Yeah, I'm sweet when ain't nobody in my face, but I'm trash when I actually got to play against the competition. That's stupid. Exactly. That's stupid. But exactly. whatever. You know what I'm saying? They 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 get paid to make them dumb ass decisions just to get fired. Yep. 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 So and that's whatever. why Andy Reid that's that why makes... Andy Reid looks like a genius. Andy Reid moved up in the draft because he couldn't believe that Patrick Mahomes was still on the motherfucking board. Yeah. And he moved yeah. up in the draft to take him. And he sat for a year. He didn't start right out the gate. Uh, Alex Smith. He sat behind uh, Alex, Alex Smith for a year. And then when yeah. he came, it, then the rest. Time to develop. The rest is history. The yeah. The rest is history. He didn't throw. They didn't throw Patrick Mahomes in there. Why? Alex Smith had just won you the division. You got. Yes. Give them. I say if you give your rookie a year at least. At least a year. To be able to learn your system and your playbook. To where they can just react and not have to think. And then that next year, that second year, because you still got a first round. You got the fifth year. They want to do that fifth year option. You give them a full off season to learn your playbook, to go behind, look who's doing it, look at the, the defenses and on film and how they're playing and stuff like that. And then you throw them in that next time. Or if they have to get in or they're showing you that they can do it in practice and all that stuff, like they're just above and beyond in that shit. He had to throw him in, but if they ain't ready, give him a year, bro. Yeah, in a case like Trevor Lawrence where Jacksonville had no quarterback, period. Yeah. A case like Trevor Lawrence where you knew Trevor Lawrence would – if Trevor Lawrence could have been the number one pick after his freshman year, he would have been. So, you know, so that's that's different. But in the case of, I'll say Bryce Young. I know he won a Heisman, but if, if I'm Carolina, I'm not letting him see the field. And, and, and I'm not letting him see the field – Maybe until his second year. That's why they signed Andy Dalton. I would have Andy Dalton, unless Andy Dalton got hurt or something like that. No, I would let him develop. Let him develop. But you know. Yeah. You know, tomato, tomato. All I know is that they oh. better not let us draft B. John Robertson. Yeah, what, 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 pick, what pick do y'all have? What pick do y'all have? We got pick 10 and 31. Ooh, I didn't know y'all had the 10th pick. Mm. Yes, we do. We got it from the Saints. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. We had two of them things. We top ten, bro. And if we get our hands on Vision, Vision Robertson, you say? <laughs> All right, well, then. I kind of want to get them just because I don't want Dallas to get them. <laughs> <laughs> I want him because I want him, but if we don't get him, I wouldn't care, but I don't want Dallas to get him. What, did you hear that, uh, the, the, the noise about Derrick Henry possibly getting yeah. coming to y'all? 
Man, I thought it was a done deal because it was hitting all of my 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 little news uh, outlets that I follow and stuff like that, like my legitimate sites. And I'm like, wait, did we just get that Henry? Because if we had got that Henry, well, it would be it would be real. <laughs> but that's the kind of but that's why I don't believe that it's still it's still a possibility because it's going to, but it's like. That's the type of move that Howie would do. Derrick Henry is on his last year contract. Mm-hmm. And he's a known commodity. Uh, Howie Roseman is the type of person that will get somebody like that because we don't have to pay him after this year. But if we wanted to pay him, they would still pay him because if that was the case, we would just pay fucking Miles Sanders. But they'll get pieces to fit in a team if they can make it if they can make the team better I can see them trading the draft pick because we have so many and we'll have so many because of all of these uh, free agent signings that we lost we have so many uh, what they call them um, conditional un- unconditional picks next year the third rounds for the for our free agent sign and we have so many Howie is ready to let go of some of these second rounds or third rounds or whatever we have so I can see us getting a Derrick Henry on our team, and if we do, my dude is going to be on it. AJ Brown is really trying to lobby for it. He is. Hey, I hope it happens, bro. I hope it happens. Can you imagine, <laughs> man? Can you imagine? Are you joking? Hey, we already got Rashad Penny on the team. <laughs> so, can you imagine? Oh, my God. The backfield would be stupid. The offense is already stupid. So what you going to do with those draft picks? I know what I would do if I got um, that first-round pick. I would either go cornerback. I would go safety. I would go I would go luxury to what I want to do. Or if I was Howie Roseman, to be honest, if somebody was going to take that, I'd trade it and get another first-round pick for next year. Because, who? I mean, we could still get somebody – Sweet in the top 15 and then on the 31st, too. Are you joking? I could get one of these corners in the top 15. I could get one of these uh, free. I could get Brian Brandt in the top 15. Hell, I can even trade that and still get B. John Robinson in the first round in the top 15 if I trade that pick. So, I mean, it, we have so many options. I'm just excited. I can't wait to see what goes there. Are you hearing me? I don't even know if we have a – I'm pretty sure we don't have a first-round draft pick because of that Russell Wilson trade. I don't know. Oh, yeah, y'all ain't got none. I, 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 I don't Yeah, I've got all y'all picks. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like I like the way um, Sean Payton has been building the team up, though. Mm. Yeah, we don't have a pick until the third round. Yeah, I'm trying not to even think of the draft, bro. You're mad you didn't remind me that it was this week. I just wanted it to pop up. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thursday, right? It always are on Thursday. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I don't even want to. I got to watch all this stuff, hear all these rumors. Because you know draft night, it's going to be some trades. It's going to be some trades. Oh, yeah. It was and last year on draft gonna, night when y'all got A.J. Brown. Yeah, and then I hope that this year is when we get Derrick Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking? I've been hearing them talk about the Titans possibly, you know, maybe drafting that dude uh, Herndon Hooker from um, Tennessee. Herndon Hooker from Tennessee. But, but what does that say about Malik Willis, though? That's crazy because you just drafted him last year. That's what, and yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. What does that say? Maybe maybe Malik Willis ain't working out for him. I don't know. Man, Malik Willis is one of those people I'm talking about. He should not have been thrown in there, Joe. He, nope. should, he, need, he need at least two, three years behind. Yep. He need the George Love treatment yep. in order to come out that Joe. But he got thrown in there, and now he's going to end up being like some kind of journey background yep. because his confidence probably going to be down. Yep. And that's the big thing to be a quarterback in the NFL. You need that confidence. Yeah, because the games that he played, he played horrible. I mean, he played, yeah. he played horrible. He wasn't ready. You're not ready. No, he wasn't ready. Yeah, some people just ain't ready, and they make you, they throw you in that fire, and then call you a bust. Yeah, I'm like, goddamn, I'm thinking like, yeah, I mean, I'm a pilot, bro. You gonna at least let me do some classes before you put me behind the goddamn cockpit and tell me that I'm trash because I ain't land this motherfucker? Like, give me some training first. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, let me do some shit first. But whatever the case may be, uh, Malik Hooker, uh, Malik Willis, excuse me, uh, I know he, he gonna be done. If they draft a quarterback, he's done, done. Like, he, 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 he gonna be, he gonna be in the XFL or the USFL soon. <laughs> you, <laughs> he'll get it together. You said cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> Hooker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hooker. <laughs> That boy's crazy, bro. Hey, man. Yeah, man. If you had a last name Hooker, you better be some kind of an athlete. Man, you better. <laughs> You're going to get picked on for the rest of your life, Hooker. Hey, Hooker. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but I mean that that I, I can't wait for a couple more days. Today Monday, I know they talk about it. Watch some more stuff. You know it's gonna get a little heated about a bunch of trades. More stuff might be coming out leaking. That's probably why this Derrick Henry Jones came out because it gets so close to the draft. You know, motherfuckers making moves, talking, and all that shit, man. What's gonna happen, mate? Maybe Aaron Rodgers gets traded. Who knows? Man, I hope Aaron Rodgers don't even go to the Jets because I actually don't even care. I, I, I like the Jets little team, and I don't want Aaron Rodgers to have any kind of success. Get your ass the fuck out of here, bro. Cry me a river out, out of retirement. What are you doing, boy? You want a banana? Hey, David, ain't that your favorite ass. quarterback, You're Aaron Rodgers? That's crazy. David, ain't that your what? favorite quarterback, what up? Aaron Rodgers? What happened with him, man? I said, ain't that your favorite quarterback? Hey, hey, Rod. Huh? Hey, hey, Rod. Hey, Aaron Rodgers, hey, your favorite hey, quarterback? What, what, what are you doing with him something now? I don't know, smoking something. Y'all watch the TV in the living room. Uh-huh. Yeah, I want to do better, so. Hey, hey, Rod. <laughs> But you ain't doing it. My play. Come on, knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. Oh, shit. I'm out here streaming and shit. I forgot to turn this shit the fuck off. <laughs> Let's stop. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, D, did you catch any of the fight Saturday night? No, nah, bro. I'm working. Tank. Oh, Tank and Ryan Garcia. Yeah. Tank. Hey. You know I hate boxing. I don't know why, bro. I hate boxing, man. I ain't, uh, I don't know, man. Everybody like that, fight, man. I don't know. I don't man, know why I don't like boxing because it's the actual. It's the sweet event, like nice. Hey, Tank, Tank Davis came to the uh, ring with Chief Keith rapping. I was like, that nigga still alive? I don't know, mm-hmm. I don't know man. You like come back as a locker, hit the first Yeah, man. I don't know why. But no, he I did. He came. Really, he you came. Know me. I was a Roy Jones, Mike Tyson. Yeah, I know. The legends. That's it. That's the legends. It, but um, he that, came. Oh, Floyd. You, you fuck with Floyd. Oh, yeah, Floyd, too. Yeah, yeah, Floyd. Yeah, Floyd. My bad. I forgot. Floyd and Roy almost look the same with these head shapes. You know what I'm saying? I'm weak. I was, I like they were the same person. I'm weak. <laughs> but I mean, it was um, it was a big event, but um, I just think Ryan Garcia fought the wrong fight. You know, you, five, you got like four or five inch height advantage. And you know Tank Davis is like a mini Mike Tyson when it comes to punching power, and you're gonna ch- and you're gonna charge right into him standing straight up, bruh. What happened? Yeah. He got knocked out. <laughs> you got knocked okay. the fuck out, man. You got punched in the face. He did. Thirty seconds into the fight, I said, "Bro is fighting the wrong fight. He is fighting the wrong fight." And, and when he started brawling with Tank, he was getting in some good shots. I said, he better be careful. Five seconds later, bap on your back. And then in the, se- and then in the seventh round, he got hit in the liver and he couldn't breathe. And that was that. That was game, set, match. Game, set, match. Lucky number seven uh, for the fight. I know it won a lot of people some money here. Yeah. Yeah, well, a couple of my homeboy Aaron and a couple other people was uh, hitting me up saying, asking who... Um, who they should bet on for the fight. I said, well, power for Tank. I told them bet on Tank. I said, even though last week I picked okay. Garcia to win in an upset because I thought he was going to fight a smart fight. But he didn't. Well, yeah. He didn't. He fought, I mean, he, he well, fought. He, he, you don't, it's like if you're fighting Mike Tyson, you're going to walk straight up to Mike Tyson and be like, hit me? Hell no, I'm pretty much running the other way, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, like, don't hit me. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But it was a big fight because like, it, it, cause both of them have huge social media following. Ryan Garcia, they right. they was trying to make him gotcha. like be like the new Oscar De La Hoya, you know, Mexican pretty motherfucker. You know, all the all the ladies like him. He got 10 million Instagram followers. So they trying to build him up like that. Like Tank, like, you know, like, Tank yeah. grew up, you know, Tank had a, grew up a little different. Yeah, he's from Baltimore. How you come with Zara? He's Did from Baltimore, and he had to go through the rough time. So, but it was, it was, it was cool. It was cool. But um, yeah, man, um, I gotta get you back in the box. I, I understand Mike and Roy and Floyd. They gone, man. Yeah, I don't know nobody, man. Maybe you show me something. I go look at some highlights and get back into the shit or some shit like hey, man. that. Uh, man, I need to, I need to come to a fight party or something, man. I gotta get out. I gotta do something, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. 
Absolutely. Man, I get back. Give me, give me something besides football to look at. I, oh, I got. Hey, well, hey, and, keep and, up with the hey, hey. These, these playoffs in the NBA, pretty good. Um. Oh yeah, I'm watching that. Yeah, you know, I'm watching that. Gold, you know, Golden State you know and I'm Sacramento. Saying? Who do you think is gonna win that series, Golden State or Sacramento? Oh man, uh, I who do I want first? I'm gonna say I want uh, Sacramento to win because I'm sick of Golden State and Draymond Green. I'm sick of them. Uh, who I think is going to win is Sacramento still. Fuck Golden State. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, they just they. I mean, they they just got they just got their. Uh, I think they got all the momentum right now. I just think Sacramento's going to win. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. As a Laker fan, I don't want Sacramento to win. And I, tell I you, don't want them to win either because they're going to be tougher than playing. Golden yeah, because they 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 will run. They will run. They they just constantly run, 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 run. They like Golden State was seven, eight years ago. Uh-huh. Um, but I think Golden State is going to win. But even then, if it's the, it would be the Lakers and the Warriors in the second round because we're going to beat Memphis. It would be the Lakers and the Warriors in the second yeah. round. Golden State would just have home court. Yeah. But um, the New York Knicks are making noise. David. Yeah. Yeah, David. What's happening? David. Knicks, bye. New York Knicks are making noise, boy. Bye. Stephen A. Smith and busted like three nuts on television talking about the Knicks. <laughs> you know it. Smiling with that goddamn ugly ass mustache he got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We here. Orange and blue skies, baby. Orange and blue skies, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but that crowd, though, has been crazy. Like, New York like New York has been, like, fucking crazy. Like, it has, because the Knicks they are winning. They deserve it, man. They've been ass. Yeah, they, the like. Yeah, uh, goddamn franchise that they are. This morning, ESPN Friends. had Spike Lee on and Fat Joe, all of the motherfuckers who was at the game. It's they, exciting when New York basketball is good. It is, bro. It is. It is. It is. And they, um. It is. They they defense they play they play like the old ninety style Knicks. They defense is yeah. crazy. Like Cleveland had what seventy nine points at the end of game three. Yeah, they getting hyped just to lose the next round. But yeah, well I mean hey, look look the Knicks ain't ain't advanced in the playoffs in ten years. They'll take it. Yeah, they ain't just want they just want to get they up three one. They just want to get out the first round and then they they'll see That's what happens. Julius man, they let that man go, but he he just be playing reckless, but he be playing. So, Who? So when he on, he on. When he off, that shit is horrible. Who? Uh, Julius Randle. Yeah, he got benched. Last, he got benched yesterday in the fourth quarter. He was playing horrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Y'all be off. <laughs> yeah, but Jalen, but, no, but, but Brunson, bro. If you doubt, I know, I know yes, Mark. How Cuban. did you do that if you doubt it? Yeah, right. <laughs> and look at your team since you did that shit too. That's what make it even worse. You ain't even get better. You got worse. Yep. Uh, that's that, it, that's that's Mark Cuban. He got to feel like an ass. He got to because Jalen Brunson is like niggas ain't realize how good he was until he came to New York. And then imagine Luca, your star, like you just brought me this nigga who probably ain't even gonna stay in Kyrie. Oh no, Kyrie gonna stay. Bro. Son- oh no, he's you- gonna stay. Oh, you think he's staying? Absolutely. I tell you why. Because Mark Let Cuban, go- Mark Cuban, for one, if he don't stay, then what the fuck did you trade for him for? You look dumber. You look dumb as hell. I mean, you already look dumb for letting Brunson go. Think- Let letting go. But he's gonna he's gonna max. He's gonna give Kyrie a max. And in the state of Texas, no state income taxes. Kyrie ain't going nowhere. Man, Kyrie's a dumbass, the type of dude to be like, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and test <laughs> these free agent waters <laughs> and see what I got out there for me. Well, if Mark Cuban throw him two hundred million dollars, uh, he ain't gonna be testing the water that much longer. He better. But why would you want him? Because he's like. He ain't even. He don't even miss with you. With, with I'm gonna tell you boy. something. I'm gonna tell you something, though, bro. I'm gonna tell you something. The Dallas, when Dallas started losing, it wasn't Kyrie Irving's fault. You traded away all of your defense to get that nigga. Mm-hmm. You just thinking that you was gonna put up a buck fifty every night. Kyrie did his part. Luca, honestly, Luca is the motherfucker who was honestly was the reason that they was losing. Cause Luca pouts all the time. He don't play no defense. Luka does not play a lick of defense. You knew Kyrie Irving didn't play no damn defense, but you got rid of your best defensive players and you think you go outscore anybody? That shit won't on Kyrie. That shit won't on Kyrie. That's why that's why I don't think he's going nowhere. But Mark Cuban looks like a dumbass because look at Jalen Brunson. And where are the Knicks? Where are the Knicks? The Knicks about to advance in the playoffs. They were in the playoffs with Jalen Brunson. They was in the conference finals last year with Jalen Brunson. Yes, but why do people do that? Like, 
this is your team, this is your chemistry. Why am I going to get gut these motherfuckers to bring somebody else in here who I don't even know is going to mix, even if they're a sweet person? You don't even know if they're going to mix with your team you got. Get us, get somebody else. Like, like, get a, get, get something to fit into your team that you really need. Because if that was the case, you could have just got you a big man or some shit like that. You could have. You could have. Well, what Dallas is going to have to do, they're going to have to get some uh, defensive players. Because I'm telling you, I don't think Kyrie is going. If if Kyrie doesn't go anywhere, you know you have to go get you some defensive players. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you have to because again, Luca doesn't play any defense. He doesn't. Well, Every time this nigga misses he's a, a shot, defensive big man, of course, ain't probably gonna need a defensive four. We'll be yep. shooting. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Like, like I don't like. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad for Luca, but I'm gonna tell you who I do feel bad for. Tyloo. I feel bad for Tyloo, and yeah. I feel bad for Russell Westbrook. Bro, Russell Westbrook has been balling. This, I don't feel bad for that person. No, I this nigga. <laughs> you know I'm a Laker dude, fan, but I know you are. Bro. But but Westbrook, dude, Westbrook has been balling, and wouldn't you know it? Guess who gets hurt when you need him most? Kawhi Leonard. Of course, because they fragile. Kawhi Leonard. Why? Even low management since he uh, since. Since, since he got that big contract, bro, he ain't did nothing. Bro, I'm gonna tell you something. I would, I would try to trade this motherfucker after the season is over with, because you can't he depend on him. On the team with, uh, with uh, Anthony Davis somewhere, so they could just got them just get injured together. <laughs> yeah, that 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 team logo would be a handicap sign. <laughs> Repairman. Like, like to be honest with you, bro. If 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 Kawhi Leonard's knees are arthritic and they're deteriorating. Then just retire and play in the big three. I'm not even being funny. The big three, they play once a week. That's really all you good for. Once a week. Yeah. Just retire, bro. Take your little contract and get your little change and go out. Exactly, bro. You want you, you got you got your big contract. You won a couple of titles. You won a couple of finals of MVPs. You're awesome when you play, but you are not dependable. I understand he's going through some personal shit because his sister actually got sentenced to life in prison yesterday. Um Goodness. Huh? What you out there doing that getting you sentenced to life and your brother Kawhi Leonard? She, his sister got convicted uh, for life for killing an 84-year-old woman in an L.A. casino in 2019. Why would you do that? No. She real big right there. Yeah. She was about that money, cuz. What are you talking about? I saw a picture of her. She looked more like a man than Kawhi do. I ain't trying I to be funny. I can only imagine I why as a funny. female that would be the horrible looking thing <laughs> I've ever seen. I mean, that's I mean, but that's crazy. But I mean, understand your personal stuff. I get it. But that has, bro. If I'm if I'm the Clippers organization, there's no way yeah. in hell I'm resigning this nigga. No. Uh, there's the only nigga who's worse than him when it comes to not playing is Zion Williamson. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Zion. That boy. That's it. Oh. That dude, that dude, should, he should, he should get a uh, handicap symbol tattoo. Man, bro, if I, I was his teammate, I'd be ready to fight that nigga. I really would. All he do is he, all he do is break down. Like, bro, you, he, you fragile fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm that's serious. Like, uh, man, that man trying, bro. He can't stop eating. Man, bro. Okay, that's fine. But you gonna do a dunk show and then sit your ass on the bench in an elimination game? And you gonna come out in public and say, "Oh, physically, I'm fine." Really? I just don't know what. I just want to get back to feeling like Zion. Really? You feel like Zion when you got a burger in your mouth, bitch? You feel like Zion when you got a burger in your mouth? No, get your ass on the floor, bro. You making almost two hundred million dollars for what? And you play thirty games this year, nigga? What? Absolutely. You lost your motherfucking that, mind, bro. I, I need that kind of job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need that kind of job. Like I would have more respect. I, I would have more respect if a player came out and said, "Until I start doing what the organization has brought me over here to do, I'm not gonna accept any more checks." You think it's it, but you think it's gonna do that show. Never, you'll never hear that. You ain't gonna never hear that shit. You'll never hear that. I'll take your money, I'm but I'm gonna, but I'll take your money, but I ain't gonna play until I feel like Zion again. Shut your bitch ass up, bro. You, and let me tell you this shit. If I was an owner and somebody and I'm paying one of these little bastards all this money and they mess around and they ain't playing and I'm paying them, then 
I'm going to have me like a little side agency that's going to go around and just be popping tires and shit. We're going to make you spend all that money back, bro. You're going to give me that back. <laughs> we get that back in blood. Uh, yeah. No, you're going to have him ending up like, um, 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 what's the dude from Power that just got killed? Yeah, yeah we, coming for that, we coming for that change, bro. You ain't going to be getting free money off me. The Tejada daddy just got killed like that. Don't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you out here with free money, man. We gonna, uh, we gonna. You, every time you go order food, we gonna knock your food down. You gonna, <laughs> food. Something got to happen, bro. You gonna have to give me this money back. <laughs> out here getting my hard earned cash, and you out here just sitting on the bench in your jewelry, talking about you fine. All right. You're right. Exactly. Okay. All right, Ben, ben Simmons, I another one. one. Okay. I, well, okay. That little, we're gonna set that, we're gonna take that little car right there. You got it right there. And bro, oh, and I don't, and, and I'm not trying to come across as insensitive because I understand that mental health is a real thing. But some of these motherfuckers out here is using that bitch as a crutch. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Zion Williams. I mean, I'm serious. Like, I would never question mental health about Demar Derozan, Kevin Love. And Markel Fultz, because they was really the first one, because Markel Fultz, how the hell you forget to shoot? Like, that is some real shit. Like, you literally, you're a basketball player, and you forgot how to shoot. Like, that was some that was some real shit. But DeMar DeRozan and Kevin Love, they the first ones who came out and said, yeah, we're dealing with mental health issues, but that didn't stop them from playing. Mm -hmm. It brought awareness to the shit. I would never question them. Miss me with Ben Simmons. Miss me with Zion Williamson. Miss me with that shit. But you see, you done already got your bag and you trying to get over. Nah, fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. Kawhi Leonard, he ain't saying mental health. He just brittle as a motherfucker. <laughs> fuck, fuck. Hey. So retire, nigga. <laughs> Next time Anthony Davis get hurt, knock on wood. Hope it don't happen no time soon. Big three, nigga. Ice Cube will be happy to have you. Yeah. Yeah, that way you need to be at on the real, cause uh, yeah. the eighty five games he ain't making it. Oh, oh, it is crazy to have you like ten players in the whole NBA played all eighty two games, just ten, and that's sad when that's like something that people are glorifying over now. He played every game, nigga. What, mm. brothers? Y'all remember the NBA? We grew up watching niggas wouldn't miss a game. You got a back to back. You just got a back to back. It is what it is. Hell uh, yeah, ain't nobody missing no game. You getting paid, you gonna play, you got that. And they don't get paid nearly what these motherfuckers get paid now. Hey, you ain't never lied. Bro, if you had an $800,000 contract, you thought you was balling. I wish you would tell Kobe to sit down. All right. Nigga, please. What? Okay, all right. And let who get the ball? Somebody else get it? Are you joking? <laughs> You so you mean you want me to sit down and somebody else gonna handle the ball? Nah, good. Especially after yeah. Shaq left. No. Yeah, that's my team, bro. <laughs> man, you sit down. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, anyway, fellas, I have a Girl Scout meeting that I have to go to. Hey! Yes. Free cookies. I still got some too, bro. Yeah, man, some cookies. When the last time you had breakfast pizza? Oh, I'm about to get something today, but uh. Ooh, I had breakfast pizza. I want to say about a month, <laughs> uh, a month ago, the day when, when we went to Shamrock the Block. That's the last time I had some. You know, I ain't even got to go all the way over to the marketplace, even though that's the spot. Yeah, yeah I told you, I got another spot that got breakfast pizza on this side. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, it's called Charred. And they do. It's called. They don't call it breakfast pizza. They call it brunch pizza. Man, look, if I had to go look, if I had, living where you live at, if I had to come all the way out here to Patterson Avenue to get the breakfast pizza, half of it would be gone by the time I got home. Oh, it do. Every time <laughs> when I do get it. Yeah. I mean, they don't make it back here. You can in the car like that, man. I'll be out there slicing and dicing. I know the that's way right. Back to my bro, that breakfast, bro, bro that's the, listen, this is free publicity. You crops breakfast pizza is the fucking best pizza in the world. Yeah, that joint off the chain. That breakfast pizza, goodbye. You gonna make me mess around and go get something tomorrow? Don't do. Give me some of that pizza. Wow, wow. Wow. Lady, come on, let you. What you doing? Uh, shoot. What you doing tomorrow? Um. Um. I don't know yet. 
Why, what's up? Yeah. Uh, man, 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 all right, Ben Simmons. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. You know Mother Nature told me. No, I know. Y'all couple times, niggas. You know, I don't know. Right. I know. I get it, bro. I get it. You're asking me. One of these times, she's going to get me. No, don't say that. Not going to worry. I'm going, bro. Anyway, yo, DBZ. Yeah. Got Girl Scout meeting I got to go to, bro. I'm going to get at y'all. All right, bro. Let's look it up. Uh, Alright, mate. Alright. Yes, sir. Later, later, later. Alright, boo. Alright. Brother Sean Cutting David. Oh man. Anyway, yes. Um I do. I got a Girl Scout meeting I gotta go to, so with that being said, wet a buzzer, wet a buzzer, wet a buzzer. Oh man, it's a beautiful day. Like I said, crisp, little chill, little chill. But um, beautiful spring day, and I, again, I hope everybody has a great week. It is your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns, and again, don't forget to hit that subscription button and become part of the Sports Plus Life family, and I'm going to tell you guys one more again about what's going on with the fam who live out there in Sandston. That is Rob and Heather. They got some festivals. They got some events coming up. There's one on Saturday, April 29th at Midtown Libby Mill. That is from 12 to 5, and then on Sunday at 360 Farmers Market. That is from 11 to 4 on Sunday, April the 30th. But again, don't forget to hit that subscription button. Become part of the Sports Plus Life family. It's your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns. I'm out this bit. Peace. I love you. <laughs> <laughs>